So Rochester, Minnesota is a town now of a little over 100,000 people. There are about 30,000 healthcare folks that live in this little town. It's a very special place, wonderful community, and a wonderful state. And they've had a relationship with the community that's been very strong, as I said, for 149 years, and Angela's uh, family hailed from there. Um, we've worked with the community for this last century, the 20th century, with 20-year plans of what's going to happen at Mayo Clinic. We have a very good relationship with the community. And essentially what this plan is all about is what is Mayo planning to do in the next five years and the next 20 years, if you will, working with the plan so the city and Mayo work together. If one looks back 20 years and one looks ahead 20 years and just sort of overlooks a little bit where the economy is in the moment because it is improving and it will, it will cycle, we expect that Mayo Clinic will invest three to three and a half billion dollars in Rochester in the next 20 years. We know from the private sector that there are probably, there's probably going to be something like two billion dollars of private investment into Rochester into, in this destination medical community plan to develop a vibrant city that supports the international traffic, as I mentioned, 137 countries coming there last year. So it's a livable city, both for the patients and the families who come with them and our remarkable staff. Now, Rochester is a small town. It doesn't have the tax base, because it's a small town, to build the sidewalks, bridges, and sewers that will be needed for this. Mayo Clinic is not asking for one penny from the state for Mayo Clinic. We're simply saying the tax base will grow with $6 billion over 20 years. We, we anticipate up to 40,000 new jobs. And all we're saying is, can Mayo Clinic get a piece of that tax revenue to pay for the sewers and the sidewalks and the bridges? It doesn't sound very elegant when you say it that way. But other states, and I won't mention them, are putting a ton of investment in outstanding marquee medical brands like Mayo Clinic to grow their facilities in order that they can become destination cities like Mayo Clinic has been for over 100 years. Mayo's grown every year. We know people will come. We anticipate they'll continue to come. We're simply asking, once the money is in and measured and the revenues are grown, can we take a portion of that to pay for the infrastructure in the town? I hope this happens. We've told the state we want to grow. We know Mayo Clinic will continue to grow. We want to grow in Minnesota. Mayo Clinic is the largest private employer in the state of Minnesota. We're responsible for 70,000 jobs, 140,000 jobs nationally, and $9.6 billion in revenue to the state of Minnesota. So we think they should just help us build some sidewalks and sewers and promise to do that. <laughs> because if we can't, we have to decide where we're going to invest. If we're going to invest $3 billion, over the next 20 years, we just have to know that we're going to invest it in a place that will allow us to grow. We have tremendous support, bipartisan, bicameral, labor, commerce. We think, I, I think it should, I think, I hope it, I don't know whether it'll pass. I, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that on national television, I suppose, but, <laughs> but um, it should pass. It's the right thing for Minnesota. All boats will rise. The, the economy, we're good for the economy of Minnesota, and we hope that the legislature will, uh, will pass this, but we'll see.